Welcome to the Nifty Chicks and welcome to our Back to Basics series. In this episode, we'll be talking through how to research NFTs and the various tools we personally use to find and learn more about projects. Let's do this. Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mindy Zell. Hi, Jen FT. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Awesome. I'm good. Uh, recently back from Portugal from the Non Fungible Conference, which was super fun. Tell her. So tell me the, about it. Tell me all about it. We want to know. Um, what was well, it like? Portugal was amazing. The event was amazing. I don't know exactly how many people were there, but I would say at least 2000 ish. Wow. Um, it was a really cool event. Um, everybody, you know, talking about NFTs and all things um, future technology, Web3. It was it was awesome. And uh, Portugal was a really cool city. And I hope to get back there again soon for a longer period of time. Amazing. Amazing. Um yeah, and actually for us folks that could not join you on that trip, um, I had the opportunity, which was a, a first in my lifetime, to experience a conference virtually. So what they had done is they had partnered with a metaverse, and actually the name of the metaverse is escaping me, but um, what, what I could do is join, create an account to this metaverse, step into it walk into this portal, which then transported me into the conference. And I could walk around and I could go to various stages and I could literally on the screen within the metaverse, watch people speaking in real time in Portugal. And it was so cool. And I was doing that from here, from my computer desk uh, here in, in Puerto Rico. So that was a really cool experience. Unfortunately though, they only aired the main stage and they did not air your uh, stage. So I missed your talk, which was super disappointing, but, um, I know that's unfortunate. However, I do have good news and yes. that is they are sharing the recordings from the event. I'm not sure when I'm going to get it. I know, I think they were working on the main stage first and then the other stages will be released, uh, you know, shortly afterwards. So hoping to have that uh, and I think once I have that available, we will definitely post that on our YouTube and then we can also, you know, share that on the podcast as well. Awesome. Exciting stuff. Exciting. Well, I well think I'm excited what about this, this episode that we yeah. are doing today, which is how to find and research NFTs. This is, yeah. um, honestly, it's like one of my favorite things to do is dig in and and find out what's going on with different projects so should we go ahead and jump into what we look for absolutely let's dive in okay cool so we were talking before we started recording the show about what we wanted to discuss on this episode and we thought it was best to pick a project to really just go into and we wanted to have a project that um, was available for you to mint currently. So it's available to buy and wasn't, you know, too high priced because everybody, you know, you know, we all have different means and how much is, you know, how much do you want to spend on an NFT is definitely one of those things uh, that comes into, you know, your I guess, evaluation process is the price and what you can justify spending, right? So we picked Boss Babes NFT and I'm excited. I actually just bought Boss Babes the other day. So should we, do we want to go ahead and share screen? Of yeah. yeah, certainly. Um, one of the things okay. that I'll, I'll start with, um, uh, cause there's so many NFT projects that one of the questions is like, how do we even find an NFT project? Like we chose boss babes because we have already found it. We we've already vetted it. There's a lot of things that we like about it and we'll talk through that. But one question that, um, I had stepping into this space, um, you know, bringing this back to the basics is like, how do I even find these, for these projects? And 
So one of the things that I do, um, and I'm not sure, Erin, if you do this too, is I literally just go back to Google. I Google NFT projects and I specifically Google women-led NFT projects to um, get a better understanding of what projects are out there. Um, so I start there more often than not, unless of course someone has already shared with me kind of a project and I'll, I'll dive into that. But if I don't, and it's a blank slate, I'll just go ahead and start on that Google of like women led projects. Cause that's, I'm particularly interested of course in women led projects. So that's interesting. And that is not something that I actually really do. Um, however, now I'm interested and so I'm going to Google and I'm women led NFT projects. I just want to see what comes up. Have you done it today? I haven't done it today. No, actually. Okay. Usually um, the articles that pop up are always relevant to world of women, to women rise, to, um, you know, the big, the big names in the mm -hmm. space already, mm -hmm. um, which are cool. But we also want to learn more about maybe perhaps the lesser known names and the lesser known projects um, specifically because they may or may not be more so in my budget than a world of women, for instance. Oh, this is funny. Uh, I'm just looking at what they've got in here. And um, so I, it is exactly what you said. It is all the the big, you know, big name projects. It's Boss Beauties. I see um, Wow and um, Fame Ladies. But funny, they're t one of the articles that comes up is a 1.5 million women led NFT project was actually run by dudes. Russian ah. dudes and that's fame lady squad. And I talk about that in my presentation that I did in Portugal. So it's funny how it all comes back around. Um, there however, go. there is one in here that I'm like, Ooh, maybe I'll go check this one out when we're done. It is pulse P U L three E women led 3d animation NFT project founded by Emily after her partner, Andrew was diagnosed with heart failure earlier this year at the very young age of 31 uh, they are releasing a collection of 7676 3D animated NFT based on a model of a human heart. That's so. super cool. I love that. You know, I don't know about you, but I have found that nearly every women led project that I have discovered has a really good story behind it, a feel good story behind it, or more probably impactful part of the roadmap is some sort of charity or giving back aspect to that. So um, I don't find that in every male led project. I don't know if it's just that we tend to be more, um, you know, giving or generous or what it is, but it's just a beautiful thing to see how um, we incorporate kind of a charitable aspect or like a a really meaningful story behind these projects. Super cool to see. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you. I and I, that is one of the things I know we're gonna talk about this, um, not necessarily in this episode today, but we have an uh, um, another episode that we have been talking about doing, and that is you know looking at all the different things that we look for in a project. This is more about the research of an individual project versus the overall of, you know, what we're looking for. But um, philanthropy is definitely one of those that I look for. And I, I also think that it, it's not just philanthropy, because I, I think it's funny, funny, not in a good way, <laughs> funny in, in a way that like people will say that they're their project is giving back to a charity or something, but then it's like, oh, 10%. And 10% is like nothing in the grand scheme of things. Do you agree with that or <laughs> my yeah. off base? Yeah, I, I get it. Um, I get the, the kind of financial aspects of it. All right. So these people probably have quit their day jobs and they probably need to make some sort of income. So a good portion of right. revenue should go into their pockets for all the hard work that they're doing. Um, Agreed. Agreed. But at the same side, um, you know, 
is is 10% really uh, impacting what they're trying to achieve? Or is it just a tack on the project to check the box that they're they have a charitable aspect to it. Like, is yeah. that, there's always that question. I hope, um, you know, as you get to research projects and get to know the team behind the projects, you can see where their true um, interests lie. Um, and you can get to know the people behind the projects. Um, and you'll be able to probably suss out whether it's a check the box, here's 10% to a charity um, just to feel good, or um, it's because they're really driving a movement and trying to make a meaningful impact. So I think I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so that you guys can follow along. And obviously, if you are listening to the podcast and not watching it on YouTube, then um, you may want to go go back and, you know, hit pause and, and go ahead and go to YouTube and and subscribe, of course, to our channel and watch this one just so you can follow along with what we're looking at and and see what we're seeing so i am gonna go ahead and hit share here so you should be looking at my where i just uh googled duck duck goad uh women-led nft project so you can see there was the um fame lady squad i was talking about and the pulse uh project but so this the, the way that i look for projects is i honestly I, I do a combination of things, but I definitely like go on open sea and just see what's happening there. Um, I also look, you know, on Solana, um, wax. I actually haven't been doing as much on wax. I'm, I'm more on open sea than anything else currently. Um, I mean, as we've talked about before, it is the most popular uh, NFT marketplace. So oh, yeah. I think let's go ahead and go to OpenSea and we're just going to look at Boss Babes since that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but okay. so here's the Boss Babes uh, OpenSea official collection. So you can see here, um, as Jenna did in her amazing OpenSea overview um, in the last episode, um, reviewing, you know, how, what to look for on OpenSea. You can see there's um, 1.2 thousand items. There are 602 owners. Floor price is 0.062, which is interesting to note because that is actually lower than the mint price of Boss Babe. So that means you could go directly here to mint at 0.07 ETH, or you could go buy off the open market here for lower than the mint price, which is interesting. So Jenna, part of that is because you could pre, the those who got in early could get the pre-sale at 0.06. So mm -hmm. they are, they went in, bought their pre-sales and now they're selling for a little bit of a profit, but still lower than, um, what you could buy for if you go directly to the website. Right, right. Okay, so basically what I'm looking for here is I'm looking at um, making sure that I'm on the right page, right? So I know that this is the official collection, not just because it says official up here, but typically I look at how many total items are out there how many different owners there are. If there's only a couple owners, then you're probably on a fake page and you want to uh, get off that page and go find the official official page. Um, right. The other thing that I always do is go to Twitter and go to Boss Babes. Um, and then you can get all of their official links here from their Twitter account. So you can see this way, you know, you're going to the right place. So there's the um, NFT minting link. You've got your official Boss Babes OpenSea, which is where we just were. Um, their Discord, their official website, which definitely we want to check out. Um, so this is how you can, you know, 
research the project and see if this is something that you want to be a part of, right? Right, right. So once we identify um, whether it's Googling or you heard of a project that you want to learn more about, um, once you identify that, one of the first stops, like you just mentioned, is the website. If they don't have a website, that should be an alarm or a red flag to you that maybe it's not a project that you want to invest a lot of money or time in um, because they obviously haven't uh, spent their own money and time in investing in a website for themselves. So going to the website. And then the thing that you just mentioned is the linkability, right? So um, in this Boss Babes website, you see there's a link, direct link on that left-hand side for the Discord, for their Instagram and their Twitter. It's all integrated, right? So if you come to a Boss Babes NFT website and there's no direct link to their Twitter, there's no direct link to their Instagram, there's no direct link to their Discord, that might be also a red flag because obviously something's not talking to the other thing. Obviously the team's not, not uh, making a kind of a cohesive look. So um, just as you said, we found the boss babes NFT, you know, we like the art, we, we like kind of what it's standing for. We check out their website. And then one of the things that I, I do um, as far as a research research perspective is I just read it. I read their website. I read, um, I want to know who the team is. I want to know what their roadmap is. Um, and the roadmap for those that may not know is kind of like their, their plan. What is their plan? Where is this project going? Um, once they mint, then what? Uh, that's really what the roadmap is designed of to kind of lay out their plans for the future. Um, so I'm always checking out the roadmap. I'm always checking out who they are. Um, I often check out their personal Twitters, their personal Instagrams. Um, once you find that the, the people behind the project. Those are all, all the things that I'm kind of looking for when researching a project, because I want to know that A, they're legit, B, they are putting as much time and energy into this project, actually, hopefully more than we are, you know, and um, that they're, they're, they're working hard on this project, that they want to make it a successful project. That's important to me. Looking at Boss Babes NFT, you can see they're all doxxed here. And I don't know if we covered doxxed in our episode that we went through, you know, all the different acronyms and, and technology or, or terminology that mm-hmm. you might hear in this space. But doxxed means that the team is out there and like you can see their pictures, you know who they are, you know their real names, they're not hiding behind some avatar or what have you. So um yeah, when a when a project faces. is yeah when a project is doxed it typically means they're not you're not going to get a rug pulled um which we i'm pretty sure we did talk about that in that episode but yes. basically you're not getting scammed um or you're less likely to be scammed if they're doxed right right i mean it's the difference between um, investing in the people versus investing in something that you don't know who is behind the, the project. It's putting right. faces to the names. It's putting credibility, accountability to the project. Like I can reach out to Anna. She's right there. I can see her Twitter. I can private message right. her. Um, that's a, a real person, a tangible person that you can communicate to. And I think that's really important putting faces, uh, you know, behind the project. I, I actually personally have not invested in any project that is docs. I haven't invested in any project that um, I can't see and who's behind the project. To me, that's just a level of comfort that I don't have. Um, right. So right. If, if the project is kind of hiding and shielding, keeping anonymous their their people, it's not often where I, I invest in. I agree. Okay. So then um, oh, we talked about Twitter. So I mean, I guess, you know, one of the things here is just making sure that they're active on Twitter and that they're, um, you know, posting and talking about what they're doing. Um, Of course, Discord is another place. And I have their their Discord here. Uh, Let's see. But this really what you what you're looking for as far as Discord goes, for me anyway, I'm looking to see that they have people in their Discord and like a, a reasonable amount of people are there. So it looks like 
they've got uh, 2,636 people in this Discord. Um, you can follow their announcements um, as to what is going on with the project, which I think is super important. So uh, you can see here what they're doing. They Yesterday they announced for every 20 boss babes minted, they're gonna buy another or buy an NFT from another women led project, which I like, um, oh. which I think goes back to, I think they said something on here about a DAO. Yep. So they've got a DAO for every boss babe you own. You'll earn one vote towards their other initiatives. Um, so I, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, what else are you looking for in? Discord. Yeah, so Discord can be super overwhelming, especially and if the we just discussed we're going to do a yeah. full episode just on Discord because it exactly. is a lot. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so the two things that I focus on are the announcements page. How frequently yep. are they making announcements? Um, the announcements are the official uh, announcements page, meaning it's run by the project. I, I can't make an announcement. I can't type on their announcements right. page. It's, it's yeah, closed so you can see public. down here, it says, right. you do not have permission to send messages in this channel, which means like if I was a manager or um, you know, a, moderator. a mod, then mm -hmm. I may have access to do that. Obviously they turn those on and off for whoever is, you know, running the channel. Right. Um, so I'm looking yeah. at the announcements um, because those are the official announcements coming from the team. And I'm also looking at their general uh, chat. I want to see how active people are, are communicating. What's the vibe in the, uh, um, in the chat? Is it, yeah, like is it positive? positive, like, you know, uh, women supporting women, or is it just men supporting men, just supportive in general, or yeah. is it like a yeah. lot of fudding, a lot of um, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you know, a lot of people who are super, you know, negative or, you know, slamming the project, slamming the team, like that, I'm really getting a sense for the vibe when I go in that general chat. So those are really the two things that I'm looking for in Discord, their general chat, what the vibe is, and what their announcements are. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, you can see here, there's a lot of other, uh, like this one has a ton. I haven't seen this many in a while, uh, but they've got pets and food and travel and games and art collectors and TV and wine, mental health, book club, cooking, music. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is where you start to build community, which is one of the things, you know, that I do think is important. However, there's also you only have so much time in the day right I know Jen FT and I I'm in a lot of different um I mean you can see just look over on the side here <laughs> these are just a few of the communities I'm a part of so I'm BFF crypto chicks women tribe women rise sad girls bar fame lady boss beauties I mean, the list goes on and on and on. My discord is really overwhelming. Um, so you can only be active. I mean, there's only so many hours in the day, right? You have to pick and choose. So you kind of have to, yeah, pick and choose what. Right. Um, but so I definitely, I look at announcements. I look at, um, I do look at general. Um, I also, I mean, I, I like to see like weekly schedules to know if they're doing other things, because one of the things that we did um, touch on is Twitter spaces, I think is really important in the NFT space. And um, I, I like to tune in to be, that. I think that it's another way to somewhat dox the team because you can hear people from the actual team and what they're planning, what they're doing, you can hear their voices. Right. right. So like this, you can see they do, um, they do game night, women in NFT Tuesdays, a Twitter space. They do um, the, like this one, NFT onboarding. Um, so I think those are cool. Um, and and how, how nice is that? They're doing trainings, how to set up a wallet, how to buy crypto how to mint and buy an NFT, security tips. Right. So, uh, I mean, I'm excited. I think we're going to try and do some sort of 
uh, partnership with Boss, Boss Babes eventually, uh, we're in conversation. So just trying to figure out what that's going to look like. Um, but I think it's it's great that they're doing that and helping onboard people to the NFT space, which, as you know, if you've listened to this show for any period of time, that's what we're trying to do. Great. That's right. Bring more people into the space. And and one of the cool things about Discord is it's really um, a way of communicating with the team. If you have a question about a project, like um, what is the mint date uh, or what's go- the cost going to be? Oftentimes oh, yeah. you can so- find those in the... Yep, the launch details. Launch, usually so yeah, I always look at details too to see what's going on. The other good thing about if once you're in the Discord um, is official links is another great place because you can, these are all the official links. So this helps you not get scammed or, you know, end up in the wrong place following, you know, somebody who's going to try and take your money. Right. Right. And um, you can reach out to them, right? So in the general chat, if you have a question for them, if it's not right. answered in any of the announcements or the, you know, launch details, you can, you have access to their team. So you just type in your question and you're either getting answers from the community or from the project team themselves. So it's a cool communication tool too. Yep. Um, yeah. And you can, I mean, you can tell like boss babe, Deanna, she's one of the founders. So you'll, you'll know, you know, who it is that's responding to you. That's right. Uh, so the other thing is that I look out to is Instagram. I like to see if they're, you know, active. I mean, it's just another, um, way to confirm, you know, that they are who they say they are. Also, I like Instagram, especially for NFTs, because you can kind of see what to, what to expect from the project. Um, and, you know, get an idea if you're going to like the art because that's yeah. part of it. And I was super excited to see this um, just because I think these are so cute. Uh, so Boss Babes, they're giving away. If you get a Boss Babe with a hoodie, then you can get um, the actual physical hoodie, which I think is really cute. That's awesome. That's awesome. So. And one of the things um, I think that's important to mention is we're talking about how to research projects, how to understand whether they're legitimate, how to get but, uh, better get to know the people behind the project. Um, but I use some of these tools to find a project. So more often than not um, on Twitter, some of the things that I do is I, I click on, um, I do a hashtag search for Yep, women in NFTs or uh, women-led projects or hashtag NFT project or hashtag hashtag, um, NFT community. And I I get to discover new projects by, you you know, doing those searches on either Instagram or Twitter is just searching those hashtags that get to discover new projects. Oh, funny. Look, we were just talking about doxing. There you and doxing, publicly revealing information about someone, name, phone, address, email. Right. So yeah. I, I mean, that's pretty much what I'm looking for when I'm doing research. I, is there anything else that we are missing here? No, uh, I think that you, of, yeah, no, to wrap it up, um, some of the tools that we use to research projects is of course um, their website, their Twitter, their Instagram, their Discord, um, ways to find projects, just a simple Google search, um, you know, searching hashtags on Instagram or Twitter or any other social uh, networks, um, you know, specifically searching hashtag NFT projects. You can often find and discover new projects that way. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much how how I get to find, uh, discover, and research projects. Yeah, Fun. and I I mean I've just put this out there. If there are other resources or tools that you guys are using to find new projects, we'd love to hear about it. So feel free to reach out to us on like you can either leave a comment on YouTube. Or, um, you know, on any of the socials, you can find us at the Nifty Chicks. We'd love to hear from you as to what you're using to research projects um, and or, you know, tools that are available. And of course, you know, we want you to uh, be sure to give us a follow and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast player to the Nifty Chicks. That's right. And always remember... Invest in yourself, you are worth it.
The Nifty Tricks podcasts are not providing investment advice and are not taking listeners and readers' personal circumstances into consideration when discussing investments in cryptocurrencies or NFTs. The Nifty Chicks is not registered to provide investment advice. All the opinions of the hosts, guests, and or sponsors of the show are their own and are for information and entertainment purposes only. Do your own due diligence and research. Neither Jenna Cazadoy nor Aaron Sell are financial advisors. We are sharing our journey with you as we learn more about this crazy little phenomenon called NFTs. We make no recommendations. We only share with you what we are learning and what we are considering investing in. You must research any financial investment on your own. Just know that we will always strive for radical transparency with any show associations. Happy minting.